Y'all, I can't think of anything negative to say about this movie. Like, nothing. Well, except maybe one thing, but it's statistically insignificant. Okay, you guys, I got to see an advanced screening at a movie theater near me for the Amazon Prime film, A Million Miles Away. It is the biographical story of Jose Hernandez, who was the first migrant worker that became an astronaut and made it into space. His story is so inspiring. I mean, this movie, you guys, it was so many good things all wrapped up in one package. It was inspiring. It was heartwarming. It was touching. It had sweet romance in it that wasn't sappy. It had great cinematography. It had wonderful acting. And the chemistry between the two leads, Rosa Salazar and Michael Pena, was so good. I mean, they were so convincing as a couple. And the standout performance in this movie for me was Rosa Salazar. Now, I only first noticed her as an actor when I saw the Alita Battle Angel movie, which is excellent. I really wish they'd get their butts in gear and come out with a sequel for us. Anyway, I digress. So that was my exposure to her. My first expo were not, I, that's not accurate. That was the first time I noticed her as an actor. I have seen her in other things. I realize now based on her filmography, but I didn't notice her until Alita. In this movie, now Alita, as excellent as it is, as gorgeous as it is cinematography wise, we don't really see her face as it truly is, right? Because she was doing all this motion capture and stuff. In this movie, we see her full features. We see the full expression of her emotions on her face, her cute little eyes, the way she does the little expressions with her mouth and everything. I mean, she's just adorable, adorable. I loved her acting in here. She was so good. And Michael Pena was really good too. Now, something that, there was a movie that I saw him in years and years ago before I noticed him as an actor. He was really good in the role. It was a very small part. He played a convicted felon in The Lincoln Lawyer who happened to be innocent. And the way he played that role was really good. The, the transformation that his character went through in the few scenes that you see him in was convincing. He did an excellent job. In this movie, he does a really good job as well. I appreciated the story that they tell us. I appreciated the pacing of this film. It is two hours long. There was one of the people in the audience, we were talking afterwards and she felt like it was too long, but I personally felt like it was perfectly paced because we go from his childhood showing what led up to the inspiration, or Basically, we see that little spark, that, that desire he had even as a young kid for space and, and how it fascinated him. There's a scene where he's watching the moon landing and or the takeoff towards the moon. And it was really cool how they filmed it. They show his eyes and you can see the reflection of the rocket going up in his eye and the flame as it, it showed. It was really cool. I mean, the cinematography here was very solid. I liked little tiny moments like that. And so anyway, we see him from a child and we see as he is advancing in his aspirations. And basically we see the years long journey that it took for him to finally get accepted into the space program. This man tried for more than a decade to get in to that program. Now, maybe there's many other people that have tried just as long, just as hard, but I don't know their story. I'm only introduced to his story and he tried at least According to the movie now, I don't know how much was fictionalized for the movie, which I'm sure there probably was stuff that was fictionalized or condensed, things like that. But according to the movie, he tried 12 times, which means 12 years. I don't know if he went a span of time in between applying, but apparently you can only apply once a year. That's what it seems like according to the movie. There was a line that someone said in here about tenacity being a superpower. and. 
I'll tell you what, uh, no truer example than what Jose Hernandez went through to get to where he got. And his very humble beginnings, I liked how they showed his humble beginnings. He wanted to go beyond that. He didn't want to be stuck in that. Not that, I mean, there were moments where it seemed that he came across as someone who was I don't know, maybe a little ashamed of his background, but not not really. Like it didn't when he would say things, it was like it he didn't mean it maybe the way it was being interpreted. He ultimately felt no shame in the fact that he got his hands dirty digging up harvesting food that ended up on people's dinner plates. Something that I wanted to mention was a quote that was said in the movie. It was referenced at least twice, and I thought it was really profound. I appreciated it a lot, and I wrote it down. It occurs during a time when Jose and his cousin are talking, and they're comparing their two lives, or like his cousin is comparing his life. He still works on the farm in the fields to his cousin, who's this engineer now. He's working at NASA. And Jose mentioned something about how he didn't want to keep his hands in the dirt or on the in the ground all the time. You know, he wanted something beyond that. And his cousin said, well, who better than a migrant, basically, to do this thing, to, to, to aim for space and the stars? Who better than a migrant? Someone who knows what it's like to dive into the unknown. And I really appreciated that. I don't know if this was actually a true quote. It was said twice. The second time that it was said was during a like a press conference that the main character was having. So I'm I'm thinking maybe it was a real quote. And I just thought that that was really profound, very simple, yet it says so much. And it's so true. And I appreciated it to the point that I wanted to specifically highlight it. Okay, back to the video. And he never forgot where he came from, but he had these aspirations beyond just that. And the drive that it took him to get where he got, it was so inspiring. And I just loved the positive messaging in here about family and the close connection he had with his parents and his father and what a great father he was. He didn't come from a broken family, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how much is fact versus fiction, but I'm just gonna go by the storyline that we're given in this movie. There was no like angsty, broken family stuff going on, very positive reinforcement of family, la familia, and how close they were, how supportive they were of each other. There were multiple scenes where maybe someone's sad or someone's really happy celebrating something and everybody comes together. Everyone, all of the family members, extended family included, they all come together to hug and surround this person and show them support. And I thought that was just such lovely messaging. I. I'm like, honestly, you guys, there wasn't really anything negative or angsty that came from this film. There were moments where there were, you know, you could tell that the hardship that he and his wife were going through as he, oh, I didn't realize that, <laughs> that picture was a little messed up when I was taking screenshots. There were a few moments where you would see the strain that his aspirations put on the family. His wife, very supportive throughout pretty much the entirety of it. She had a lot on her plate too because he would be away doing his studies and trying to advance his career through various means. And, you know, she's back at home with the kids and the stress got to her a little bit, but it was never anything that turned into something nasty between them. They were still very loving with with each other and they just adored their children. They adored each other. Their relationship was so sweet and so adorable. The parts where they're courting and then when they're married and as they grow through, grow together through their married life, it was just lovely. This film was lovely. I mean, <laughs> I, I just, I was just like, I was looking for something to criticize. Well, not actively looking, but just trying to think, oh, what are the cons here? There's really only one tiny little con. And honestly, it doesn't really even count as hardly anything worth mentioning. But I will say that there was one thing that I noticed when I'm watching this. I got through the rest of this video without coming back to the con that I was starting to talk about. It's very minor. Basically, it's that with some of the characters and they're supposed to be 30 years older than they had been towards the beginning of the movie, some of the aging 
was not convincing. In other words, some of them did not look like they had aged a bit. Others looked like they had aged appropriately. Some of the aging prosthetics weren't the best, but it was just something that I picked up on. Like I said, very minor. It didn't detract from the story. It's just the only thing I could think of to point out is a con. Okay, back to the video. And it, it expands many decades of his life. It starts when he's a child in the 60s and it ends when he has made his journey into space. And that span of time, excuse me. Yeah, it was 40 plus years because he got the urge in the late 60s. He ended up in space in the late, uh, um, I would, it's, not really accurate to say the late 2000s, but the late, the late double O's, I think maybe 2008, 2009, so maybe 2010, somewhere around there. And so this was a long time we're spending with him. And I felt like getting back around to what I was saying about the pacing, I felt like it was done very well. We get a decent amount of time with him as a child. Then we get the bulk of time with him as an adult, meeting his wife, trying to become an astronaut, making it there. Hold on a minute. I already did it. Now, let me finish my review. <laughs> because it's almost it's almost midnight, Arturo. Let me finish. What was I saying? Something about pacing. Oh, I was saying that I felt like it was properly paced. I honestly didn't feel like this movie was too long. I think if it had been much shorter, I would have felt robbed because I loved every moment that we spent with him and his family and just everything. I'd like, I, I can't fault the pacing in this at all. And I like the little moments of comedy that were put in here. Definitely uh, some comedic moments, nothing super slapsticky or ridiculous, but just, just, you know, true to life comedic type of situations and things that uh, were said in interactions between characters. He had a really special relationship with his cousin. I like how that played out. At first I was a little confused. I thought it was his brother, but it was his cousin. This film remained very true to his Latino heritage. I mean, he, he was Mexican son of Mexican parents. They ended up deciding to stay in the United States for more um, stable life for their kids and education and things like that. There were these different things that it was, it was very Mexican. It was very Mexican, this movie. And they, they would play different songs that I'm very familiar with. At one point, we heard the Juan Gabriel song, Querida, and I knew that. Other songs that I knew, other things that it showed that I was very familiar with. In addition to things like the the Juan Gabriel song, they would show things on the TV, like uh, Lola La Trailera, or what, I think that's how you say it. That movie with the girl that drives the big trucks, <laughs> she's the actress who played in Juana La Cubana, which, is actually a really good story. I wish they would remake it with better acting talent and better cinematography because I, I honestly really enjoyed that film. Anyway, whatever, uh, I just mentioned that because it had that actress in it. But, you know, just little touches like that that they included that any Mexican or Latino with Mexican ethnicity is going to appreciate when they watch this. It just felt very authentically Mexican, basically, <laughs> except they were living in the US. Something else that I appreciated about this was it tackles a little bit the struggle that he had like in the 80s and he's working at NASA, right? He as He's an engineer. And there it shows this scene where someone mistakes him for the janitor, this chick right here. And I was thinking about how this was pulled off and it was, it was interesting because I was noticing that it was a very similar sort of scenario to that scene in Blue Beetle, but it succeeded. It, it was able to pull it off successfully without being overly snotty about it, like what happened in Blue Beetle, where, where it felt so inorganic and so shoehorned in and just didn't fit. Because like in Blue Beetle, he shows up, he's got this suit jacket on and he looks like he's dressed up like as, as a businessman or whatever. And the lady at the desk, hoity-toity, of course, white woman, she 
Oops, uh, deliveries in the back. You know, it, it was just like, it didn't fit because he did not look like a delivery man. He did not have a delivery man uniform on. It was like, okay, that's really stretching it. In this movie, it's a similar sort of situation in that he didn't really look like a janitor because he didn't have on janitor attire, but the lady knew that a new person had come in. And so she sees this new face and I guess she just assumes he's there before he's gotten in his uniform, right? And she assumes he's the janitor because of his ethnicity. I forgot to mention that not only was he the new guy there that the lady at the desk was expecting to see at some point, but he was asking for things that a janitor would be asking for, like light bulbs. So her leap in logic there was understandable to an extent, but at the same time, it was obviously erroneous. And yet the point of that was something that was carried off much better than in the previous example of similar situation that I mentioned, like in Blue Beetle. Okay, back to the video. But the way that part was handled, it did not come across abrasive like how it did in Blue Beetle, where it felt like they were making a point to let you know just how terrible white people were to this poor guy. And it didn't it didn't come across that way in this at all. There were other moments where they touched on, oh, you know, the fact that he's not a Caucasian. And is that why he's being held back? And no, well, it's because he doesn't have this skill. It doesn't have this skill. doesn't have this skill. He doesn't speak Russian. You know, different things like that. So I was like, that's really interesting. I like how they pulled that off where they showed you the struggle that he was going through, but they didn't make it about that. That wasn't the focus of his story. The focus of his story was he had this goal. He worked towards this goal. He accomplished this goal. And I thought it was interesting how they broke this movie up to in early on in the movie, his father gives him some advice about, he, he called it his recipe for how he was able to do what he did. And he explained, well, first you have to have this goal. Then you have to see how far you need to work you know, go to get to, I'm paraphrasing totally, but it was like that. It was broken up into like, I don't know, four or five different parts. They broke the movie up that way, which was really interesting. I, I liked how they pulled that together. Narratively, it flowed very, very well. And the positive messaging in here and the wonderful acting, the sweet performances by all of the characters, well, not all the characters, let's say his family members. There were characters that he interacted with in his working life. Some of them would come across as a little bit, you know, <sighs> assholey, but it wasn't overly. It wasn't like that was the main focus of what was going on. And so it balanced well. I mean, it worked well. This was an example of that sort of thing working. And there are so many other examples where it just doesn't. And maybe I'm not using good enough words to describe how and why this worked better. But when you watch it, perhaps you'll see what I mean. This was just a fantastic film. I enjoyed it so much more than I expected I would. I had a feeling I would like it, but I honestly did not anticipate that I would like it as much as I did. I went to go see this because it was a free screener. It was offered on the big screen. If I hadn't been able to get in, the, the audience was, it was packed. There were people that couldn't make it in. And at the end of the movie, the room, there was just applause throughout the entire room. That's how wonderful this film was. And when people left the theater to give their feedback to the Amazon representatives right outside the door, they were just clamored around the table writing. Sometimes people just take off after they see film. They don't really care to take the time and energy to let the pe like the company know what they think, but p there were many people writing their thoughts down. Anyway, I think what I was saying was that I went to go see this film because it was free. It was on the big screen. If I hadn't been able to get in, I was going to come home and watch the screener that I had signed up for. But it was better watching it on the big screen. I can't say that there was anything super fabulous about the way it looked on the big screen that made it something that you must go see on the big screen. My thinking initially was, oh, it's going to show stuff in space, so it's going to be worth it. But the bulk of the movie is not about that at all. And while there is some really cool cinematography, like really interesting way they frame some shots, like I said, where they were showing the reflection in his eye. And then there's a scene where it shows his wife watching him in the rocket, taking this scene right here, like it's showing her image, her reflection, watching him 
as he's taking off. I thought that was really interesting the way that was done, but this is certainly something that can be enjoyed and appreciated on the small screen, which is where most people are going to be seeing it because it comes out on Amazon Prime September 15th. I highly recommend it. If you want an honest to goodness, feel good movie, that's going to leave you so happy at the end. Like I just felt so positive about everything after this movie was done. At the end, it also shows images of the real guy with his family, his wife, and his mom and dad and all of that. And it has some other little text that it, that it you know, shows throughout. Uh, that's definitely worth sticking around for when the credits start to roll. At least, you know, watch, the, you'll know when it's done, then the main credits come, like with you know, once they get through the initial ones, then when I say main credits, I mean all the rest of the people that worked on this film. There is, it was kind of funny. There's this one part where he's, where he's riding in his car and you can hear a Rick, Rick Astley song. And I was thinking, wow, I bet people didn't think they were going to get Rick rolled watching this movie. <laughs> I thought about using that as my opening and then I forgot. <laughs> until <laughs> just now. I'm looking forward to actually watching this again, maybe with my husband. I think he will really enjoy this. He remembers this astronaut. There is a scene with another astronaut, one of the ladies who trains him. And when it showed her initially, I was thinking, wow, she looks familiar. I mean, I knew she was playing a part, but I was thinking she's, she's looking like someone that I, I know who she is. And I was like, oh, is this that astronaut that died in 2003? I think it was 2003. Remember when they were coming back in and tile or something had broken off of their shuttle. And so when they came back in, it it, it burned. And um, yeah, that, that was her. According to the movie, they knew each other and he sort of, you know, trained under her. She was one of his uh, trainers and everything. They showed that and that was an interesting bit of um, information about his life and um, people that he knew at NASA. I, I can't think of anything else to say. I, I just, I, I can't say enough good things about this film. Maybe it, it it's going to feel like it's a bit too formulaic with regard to how everything fits together so perfectly with how they tell the story and, you know, things, I, they can be predictable because they're telling us this story in a narrative that works for movies but it works well. There's a reason why that sort of narrative is often used in a film, especially a film about stuff like this, you know, the underdog trying to make it to the, you know, accomplish his goals and make it to the top, whatever. It works well, and it works well here. I knew full well that my heartstrings were being yanked on, but I went right along with it because it was so masterfully done. And I guess that's it. I don't think I have anything else, so I'm gonna wrap this one up. If you guys get around to watching it, let me know what you think. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm kind of feeling sappy. <laughs> and maybe some people will watch this and be like, ah, blah. but um, I loved it. I, re I really did like it a lot. And I think it's worth a watch, especially when we're surrounded with so much angsty crap going on in a lot of films that we watch, so much divisive narrative nonsense that's happening. This is something that it feels like it is so unifying because it just appeals to something in all of us that we can identify with and appreciate and understand. Okay, I'm definitely stopping now. <laughs> Adios.